Hello, my name is Dr. Megan Cox, and I'm here today to talk about enhancing service delivery with telehealth. Our practice has been striving to use technology as a tool and not only the method for providing services at this time. I'm going to talk a little bit about four different areas. Rapport building via telehealth, screen sharing when we're on the computer, game and movement breaks that we might use via telehealth, and also some tech tools that could be helpful, something new for you to try with clients to engage them over this different form of providing services. I'll start by showing you the program that we use, Ring Central, which is powered by Zoom and looks a lot like it for those who are familiar. Before we even talk about the technology that we use on this program, I want to point out that whatever program you're using, rapport building can be even more fun and useful for clients at home, especially for kids. I'm going to share my screen, which I'll talk more about in a minute, to show you this cute scavenger hunt, which allows me to show interest or learn more about the child's life and favorite things, and gauge how eloquent or not their emotional vocabulary is from the start. I also have children and adults alike introduce me to their pet, and with kids, we've often used them in a tough spot when we need the pet's feedback or help from the child's perspective. Moving on to screen sharing, the program that we use, Ring Central, has a built-in option to share a whiteboard, which is useful for the purpose of a visual schedule. I generally have clients cross off each item as we go to keep them oriented to where we're at in session, particularly for young children, not so much for adults. To do this, you need to give the participant remote access. You do this by clicking the heading at the top. Uh, there's a button right here. And you can also share your browser, which is important for our next category, games and breaks. The internet gives us unlimited materials for these. Some can be verbal and are similar to ones I would already use in the office, like would you rather questions for kids or guessing games like 20 questions. Right in the program, I use the whiteboard for things like tic-tac-toe, a word guessing game, or drawing pictures. On the internet, it's also fun to use age-appropriate games like this matching card game, which I found free on Disney's website. With technology, we also can't underestimate the importance of movement breaks. I know I need them myself. Without technology or using anything fancy in the program, we can do things like Simon Says or having a child pick a move like 10 jumping jacks. When I share my screen, I show something like this fun unicorn yoga break and ask the client to pick a pose to try, or I use dance and movement videos for kids from Go Noodle or Cuckoo Kangaroo. Many of my clients have already seen videos like this from Rainy Day Recess at school. Last but not least, I wanted to mention a few helpful technology tools. You can find free meme generators online. I make coping statements with clients, allowing them to choose the photo and the phrase that they think would be most helpful. Then they can save the meme directly to their phone or print it and post it somewhere in their house as a reminder all week long. I use Canva.com, which has both free and paid versions to help turn these into phone backgrounds for clients as well. It's really easy and the client can save right to their computer after we make it. Finally, I use Canva.com and Google Docs to make personalized worksheets and stories. At our practice, we do a lot of exposure therapy, and having a tracking worksheet can be helpful. They can be as simple as something like this, or something as involved and personal as this example. I also have clients make schedules for the week ahead, and making a pretty one can be very motivating for some of my younger clients. Finally, I also write short books and stories with my clients who generally benefit from hearing psychoeducation about a particular topic, but then writing it, adding themselves in as a character, and then teaching it to mom or dad. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to reach out directly with any comments, questions, or suggestions of your own that you'd like to share. I'd certainly love to hear them.